Today I'm going to be walking you through the protein design tutorial. We usually think of the relationship of sequence and structure of a protein uh, related to Atkinson's dogma, where the native structure of a protein is solely determined by its sequence. However, we know proteins can adopt mutations uh, to change some kind of functionality while still maintaining its structure. So the goal of protein design is to understand, given a pro certain protein fold, which sequences can assume that peptide uh, geometry. Uh, protein design in Rosetta uses um, rotomer sampling, or basically the um, most likely configurations of a particular amino acid side chain, to um, sample different possible uh, sequences uh, that are optimal for a particular conformation, and it evaluates this using its energy uh, energy function uh, and using uh, simulated annealing Monte Carlo optimization. Protein uh, this Rosetta protein design tutorial will be um, essentially uh, outlined in four steps. One, we'll be going through how to create the input, and next you'll need to minimize this input using fast relax, and then we'll be going through design and different ways to analyze your protein designs. So to start, first you have an input, and what do you do with it? Well, Rosetta protein design requires that you start off with a PDB file, and on top of that, that um, protein design can only act upon um, atom types in the PDB file, so you need to eliminate any kind of non-atom types. You can either do this using the Python script, cleanpdb.py, um, or you can use another approach where you can pass uh, the ignore unrecognized res or ignore zero occupancy flags so, or set to false so that um, Rosetta will just bypass any uh, non atom types. The next step is to use fast relax for minimization. So usually when you download a uh, PDB or if you have your own PDB file, um, sometimes the uh, configuration is less than op energetically optimal than it, it could be. And so the goal of using fast relax is to identify represent representative conformation of your protein that represents not some higher energy, but uh, the lowest energy um, possible state. And um, you achieve this by using uh, cycles of repacking, where basically you, you reorient these side chains of uh, your, uh, or basically you, you optimize the rotomer configuration of your protein um, so to remove clashes, and then you use minimization to optimize the torsion angles. Um, it is important to note that, um, so Rosetta Fast Relax can substantially alter your native or your starting protein backbone. And design benchmarks have shown that this changes of little as one angstrom uh, RMSD can change sampled sequence space, or basically what sequences you're uh, identifying that are optimal for that confirmation. And so it's important to uh, constrain your minimization so that uh, fast relax does not move your native uh, or, or basically um, reshape your native geometry of your protein. And so there are a number of ways of how uh, going about um, constraining your uh, file or your input structure. Um, and on top of that, there's another back um, important thing to keep in mind is that uh, Rosetta treats your input as a sequence of um, items to act upon. And this is um, defined by the Rosetta fold tree. And so if you want to think about for each consecutive uh, residue, um, this the relationship of the first and the second and the second to the third uh, residue are um, defined either by its torsion space, so basically its dihedral angles, its Cartesian space, um, where you just have the absolute atom coordinates or sometimes you can actually define this by dual space where it's a combination of both its dihedral angle and um, atom coordinates. Um, and also it's important, uh, so for protein design, they use torsion space. Um, and so 
and on top of that, um, during protein design, um, it will sequentially alter um, or basically sequentially uh, act and design such that, so first it'll start with the N-terminus or some other place where you define as the start and then it will sequentially go through and um, act upon your protein. Um, and this can be controlled by the move map. So to create a move map, um, essentially what you're doing is saying uh, or telling Rosetta, all right, act upon these residues in a certain manner. And so for a move map, you basically can tell what kind of angles or atom coordinates can you change. And so the particular file format for this would be uh, so within your move map file, you'll define either whether it's a residue um, or a jump where it's basically you have like a chain break or a separation between two different um, either proteins or monomers or something like that. And so, for example, you can say, uh, you can just give us um, a particular command for a single residue or you can give it through a range of, a range of um, uh, residues or you can basically say, uh, and for um, chain breaks, um, you can say whether or not to allow reorientation of um, or, or rigid body movements of, between those two um, independent uh, chains or monomers or whatever. Uh, typically what's done is instead of changing the move map, you'll pass um, different kinds of flags to um, constrain um, Rosetta minimization in fast relax. And so kind of as I alluded to before, design is heavily influenced by your input structure. So you want to make sure that um, your minimized structure still represents um, what you in initially intended to design. Um, and so usually you'd want to use the, the flag highlighted in blue, um, but in some instances you might want to actually minimize your input structure so that it uh, represents some other uh, template. So you could use, you could pass this flag where you use the, you constrain it to your um, target structure. And then there are a number of other ways that you can do to more uh, forcefully control um, how much your um, input is changed during minimization. And then after minimization, um, you start, you'll want to start creating um, your uh, protein design experiment. And so in uh, Rosetta protein design, at least for single state design and the recon multi-state design um, protocols that we'll be using in this tutorial, these, the protocol is defined by your XML file. Um, I'll go through this more in the actual walkthrough to explain kind of what the, how an XML file is um, structured, but it uses essentially what's like HTML to where you, you include certain, um, uh, so here within brackets you include certain commands to actually tell um, Rosetta through an XML script how to control your experiment. The next thing to do is to create a res file. And so what a res file does is essentially tells Rosetta which amino acids in your input structure to act upon and in what way. And so here's just a list of terms um, that you could pass. Um, and so for, and for today's um, tutorials, we'll be telling Rosetta to uh, design or allow design of all 20 canonical amino acids at certain positions, so we'll be passing this flag. And again, I'll be going through more of the actual structure of this res file um, later in the actual tutorial run through. Um, but just to kind of get a better understanding of how the res file um, is structured, so you can have this optional header, um, and then it's you must always include start or else Rosetta will not actually know how to read in your res file. Um, th this, um, and then, or, yeah, this is very, very important to include. And then afterwards you can include um, basically a list of um, commands to, that specifies which residues and chains 
uh, to act upon accordingly in design. And so the reason why you have this res file is that it interacts with the uh, packer. And what the packer does is it, given the list of commands that you define in your res file, it'll build the rotamers uh, for each uh, specified design position, and then it'll detect all of its neighbors uh, at that design position and calculate its rotomer energies. Um, and then you'll go through three to five rounds of design. And during this time, um, so you can either use a fixed backbone approach where you are limiting your design to just uh, rotomer substitution, or you can use something that uh, where you allow backbone movement um, after each round of de design so that here, after you've done your rotomer substitution, or actually, sorry, it's between here, after you've done your rotomer substitution, you allow for slight backbone movement to accommodate um, the uh, uh, the rotomer substitution um, and so basically the idea here is that you can either do a constrained design where you allow only rotomer substitution for um, a highly constrained backbone or you can do a more um, lenient sampling where you allow for um, backbone movement that accommodates these mutations. And after that, you uh, return the best energy, and with that, you return the sequences that were accepted for that given structure. And so for today, the first tutorial we'll be going through is uh, single state design. And so during single state, this particular design experiment, what we have is a um, antibody um, uh, uh, fragment, or it's a fragment antibody in both the heavy and light chain, here shown in dark and lighter blue. And so, um, and what we're interested in designing is the residues within the um, fab that are uh, within five angstroms of the binding interface of our antigen. And so I've highlighted here in red these residues that are defined as the interface residues. So we're only concerned about designing the interface residues of the antibody. Uh, and the reason is, is that we're trying to maximize the um, binding uh, interface energy of this antibody to the antigen. In other words, we're trying to ma maximize the um, binding affinity of the FAB to the antigen. And then during design, um, so we'll be designing the red residues, and then we'll be allowing um, the residues that interact with these red residues uh, on the gold side to um, reorient themselves to uh, increase the binding uh, energy score, or decrease the binding energy score, excuse me. Um, and then we'll be doing a similar kind of experiment using multi-state design. Uh, in particular, we'll be using the recon multi-state design algorithm. Um, I'm not going to be going through what the recon design algorithm is, but in the tutorials, I've listed um, the papers that describe this algorithm. So if you're interested in using this kind of approach, I highly recommend reading through the papers that I've listed to get a better understanding of what recon um, does on a technical level and also what it's capable of doing. Um, but for this particular experiment, we'll be for the multi-design experiment, um, what we have is the same um, antibody that we've used for single-state design and the same uh, interface residues. And so what we're trying to do is not optimize the, um, the binding energy of these residues so that on it, the sequences that you're identifying have the average lowest binding energy against two, antigen, two antigens. Um, and then, so for our control experiment, we'll be designing these uh, interface residues in, um, as independent complexes. And so the whole, the rationale behind this is that we're, it, this would be like trying to find a broadly neutralizing antibody. So can you actually um, identify an antibody sequence that can bind to multiple antigenic targets? Um, and then for the last step is our analysis. So once we have our designs, how do we know that what we have identified is actually uh, a viable solution? And so one of the first things 
or kind of the easiest um, ways to go about looking at your designs is what sequences were actually sampled. And so an easy way to do this is to generate a web logo. So you can either use the um, web logo um, website to upload your own your sequences or uh, you can use the script that we've provided to um, generate your own uh, web logos. But essentially what this does is it um, it gives you the shin and entropy bit score. So basically how likely uh, is that uh, position or um, how likely is this position going to be fixed in sequence? And then on top of that, what it gives you is the, um, the bit score of individual um, possible amino acids for a position. And so what you see here is that um, for certain positions like uh, these first several, um, you only see one amino acid type. So basically, Rosetta's picking um, a single mutation. And then for others, you see a much higher sequence diversity. And so, you know, in other words, these residues are more highly conserved, and then these residues, or sorry, these residues right here would be less likely to be conserved uh, as predicted by recon, or sorry, uh, design. A uh, more in-depth way of going about this is looking at the actual uh, score terms uh, in relation to your uh, native or input structure. Um, and so um, for, this or for this particular tutorial, we'll be looking at four score terms. Um, you know, usually a good way to start is just looking at its total score, so the sum of all of the energy terms defined by Rosetta, um, and you can just look at the lowest some certain percentage of lowest scoring models. Um, for the recon multi-state design algorithm, so basically what this provides is, so the total score is calculated, um, uh, I'll go more in detail, I'll explain this, but essentially for recon you are going to have to normalize some of these scores uh, based on the number of inputs that you include for um, uh, design run, and then um, and then on top of that, since we're interested in looking at the binding interface uh, uh, energy or the binding affinity, we're measuring um, the both the binding energy. So this is uh, the difference between the energy of the bound and unbound partners, uh, and then also the binding density. So basically, how much of the binding interface is exposed. Um, or buried. And so it's basically normalized by the amount of buried residues um, in the uh, defined interface region. And so I'll explain more as I go through the tutorials, but um, this concludes the uh, intro to the protein design tutorials. And if you're interested, you can uh, follow along my uh, my tutorial or the screenshot of my tutorial in the protein design uh, workshop. All right, thank you for listening and hope to see you in the next section.